presented by the, the troop here. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Tracy. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, nice, nice to meet you, Lindsay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Nice Good to meet, to meet you. you. Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Nice to meet you. Once she's met the kids, Victoria gets an introduction to the canine family members, Pomeranians Kiki and Pom Pom, and 11-year-old blind bull mastiff, Samantha. We have another dog. Okay, tell me. Um, peanut butter. Peanut butter's prey drive doesn't just apply to the family. She especially likes to prey on their mastiff, Samantha. In, in a controlled way, I would like to see her reaction to Samantha. Put her on a leash. We put her on her leash, yes. yeah. And I'd like to sort of see the reaction. Okay. As long as I'm holding her. Go. Come on, Sam. What would she do if she got uh, got at her? Oh, oh no. Uh, no. That's what she her. would do. Right. See, this is not normal. <laughs> see, she wants to help Sam. She would bite. Look at that. Sammy. It was quite disconcerting to see how Peanut Butter wanted to get at Samantha, and it wasn't friendly at all. I have no doubt that she could be a liability towards the other dogs. No, I don't want to cause her any more um, stress. Let's Come put her, her back. Come on. Look at that. See how she chokes herself? Yeah. It's almost like she's mad because she's in the house. There's a big jealousy thing. With peanut butter out back for the past seven months, Samantha now stays indoors, creating a very big poop problem all over the house. Ever since we got peanut butter, Samantha's been pooping in my closet. She refuses to go outside. And also, she just poops and pees everywhere. Expert dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been teaching basic training commands to the Meltzer family's dog, Peanut Butter. Down. Down. Good girl. Now, she brings the focus back inside with old timer Samantha. She is 11 years old. That's old for a dog. She's already declining. Her health is declining. She's blind. I just want to make things easier for her. If you look on her face, mm -hmm. in order to greet, I'm going to make a noise, extend my hand. Oh, good. Now she can smell me. If you look around her muzzle, can you see around her muzzle? There are hairs. Yeah. These are actually really, really important. And what these hairs do is that they sense changes in air movement. Wow. So when a dog is coming up to, like, an object, the air changes, and um, the air changes, and so the whiskers can feel that change. Mm -hmm. Because the whiskers, they're called vibrissae, are very, very important with touch. So it gives the dog information about what they are about to touch. Yeah, because she will stop right before she goes she into... Stops. She stops because she feels that little air pressure. Yeah. Ooh. Now she knows she's coming up to an object. Mm -hmm. So with a blind dog, those vibrissae are even more important. Right. And I just wanted to illustrate that, that, that point here. See those beautiful Little hairs things. do all that. They, they do all that. that. The hairs also filter smells towards the nose. And with a, a dog that's not sighted, the sense of smell becomes even more important. Mm -hmm. The hearing becomes more important. Um, now, with an old dog like this, an old dog actually loses around... If you would take an adult brain and you take a really, really old dog's brain, like her, you, that, that really old brain would weigh about 25% less than the adult brain. And it's not so much that the brain cells are dying, it's that the um, connections between the cells are breaking down. Right. So in an adult dog, on average, a normal message that goes from cell to cell travels at about 225 miles per hour. But in an older dog, such as um, Samantha, that message will, will travel at around 50 miles an hour. Oh, wow. So you can see that the way she thinks is much slower, that the way her brain reacts is, is much slower. So you, ne you, know, you need to give older dogs more time. Thinking of her blindness, I want to be able to make it easier for her to get around. So not only is the fact of touch important for her, but also the fact of what she feels under her feet. 
Samantha keeps on bumping into things. She keeps on tripping down the steps in the house. And I just want to make it a little bit easier for her to get around. So I put down mats to delineate where there is a step. She feels a different texture under her feet, and that tells her that she's coming to a step. Oh, OK. All right? Good girl. Lovely. With blind dogs, it's also really important to tell all your guests to greet them with noises and to hold out the hand away from your body. So, da -da -da. hi, Papa. So she can feel your hand first before she gets stroked. And that's really important because you can startle blind dogs very easily just yeah. by coming and touching them. Yeah. If you hold your hand out, let her scent it first and then stroke. It's so much better for her. Um, using different noises, like obviously your voice, or like this. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Yeah. Good girl. Shows that she's coming to you. Yeah. So always when I see a, a blind dog coming to me, I'll, I'll make a noise like that. I also use different scented candles in different rooms, so she associates a certain smell with a certain room. I would put a To keep Samantha safe, the candles should never be lit. I feel like I'm just glad that, um, that Victoria actually pointed out ways to make us Samantha's life better. With these new tools in place, Samantha will be able to find her way, but there's still one unpleasant issue left to address. I don't think Samantha's toilet training issues have anything to do with peanut butter. I think she's just old and she's becoming incontinent, especially overnight. Because Samantha's issue can't be solved with training, Victoria's solution is to manage the problem. This pad has a certain scent on it, which oh. actually can, um, you know, almost give the dog the incentive to, to pee and poop. So I will find a place where the dog is showing me it wants to do it most, and I will line it with pads. At night, Samantha can't hold it anymore, and I think that's just her age. The pads will encourage her to toilet in one place, so she's not going all over the house. This is obviously a little small for a, for a Mastiff. Yeah. So you're going to probably need four. But it's just going to make it easier. Isn't it, slobber chops? Isn't it, slobber chops, huh? Try and find out where Samantha is toileting at night. Put the pads down there. So again, you know, we're setting up this very old girl for success. All right. All right. Thank Good luck. You. Work well. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Nice. You want to try to get down? Come here, honey. Tracy and the girls are making sure Samantha can find her way. They also take precautions against any nighttime accidents. Smell, Sam, just smell it. Here, get a whiff of it. Brush your fingers. Back at the house, Victoria wants to show Tracy how to keep peanut butter's focus when the other dogs are out in the yard. In the past, that's been impossible. <laughs> I had to wait till now before I could do any work between peanut butter and your other dogs because there's no point in doing work with a dog that does not know how to focus on you. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna desensitize her a little bit to their presence. She needs to have focus on something other than them, okay? Okay. All right. The secret with this training is, is that you bring the dogs out, you have somebody behind the gate with her, getting her to do various commands like sit, down, watch me, and you bring the dogs closer and closer. When the dogs come in, she's, she's working, so she has less time to go crazy. All I'm gonna do now, watch me, good girl. I just want you to bring the palms closer, watch me. Watch me, stop, stop, with them, stop right there. Good girl. Good girl. I want to show her that the palms are a source of good things, but I also want her to have calm behavior around them. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. So she looks at one calmly, she looks at the other calmly, she gets a treat. Peanut butter stays calm and focused, but Samantha's presence is a bigger challenge. Watch me. Come here, Sam. Come here, honey. Watch me. Oh, good girl, good girl. Keep some out the back, keep some out the back. Pop, sit. Although Peanut Butter gets excited. Sit. Very good. Victoria regains the dog's focus, and there is no aggression towards Samantha. Very good. Here. 
it's a real improvement. Good girl. The family have got to keep practicing the desensitization training because if they do, Peanut Butter's behavior will significantly improve. Girl. Now she's wagging her tail now. She's looking at me. Good girl. I can totally see where the training's going, and that is, uh, I think, my biggest thing that I really want to work on.